So today's presentation is 10 minutes long, and then the rest of it is a panel. This is meant to be a 10x talk, 10 minutes. Ready, skill set, flex. We call this the next learning. And this might seem familiar to you because we spend a lot of time learning these days in the flow of work. And 20% of it is working together and 10% of it is more structured. And a term that Gary has come up with is just in time, just in context. Things are moving so fast that we have to be contextual about what it is that we're delivering and learning at the same time. What resonated with me is the idea that we're getting to a world where we have to learn how to ask for help, because very rarely are we going to be the ones that are an expert in a space where we can add a lot of value from what we are experts at. And so, you know, I had a lot of value to add to that project, but not in terms of content knowledge, in terms of design and finding a way to make that a meaningful pathway for a learner that I could do. But connecting to the right relevant content, that was not gonna be my area of expertise. So I think it's learning to ask for help and then finding the resources that can do that. You know, trying to understand the skills at all levels of the organization and also the skills externally and how those look in the labor market more broadly. Because we feel like until we find a really great way to map skills to every person internally, we're going to have to rely on some of that external data in the meantime. So that's why we bring in these external labor market insights. We package them up in a way that's really understandable for the different business units. We help them to understand what skills are rising in the labor market, what skills are emerging, where the, the biggest growth has been over the past six months, over the past year, two years, three years. And you can really glean a lot of information off of that. And we found that more than anything, it's a great way to start the conversations with the business because a lot of times they don't know exactly, you know, every single skill they need. You know, they might have thought about them at various points over, over the past six months, a year, whenever they've been thinking about it, but those kind of come and go. But when they can see a list and they can see what's, what's really growing and what's resonating externally, uh, they can get an idea of, hey, yeah, actually, that is something that, that makes a difference internally as well. Speaking of data, I'm going to get back to Tracy. And we were talking about it in the context of self skills and how do you add EQ into the skills? And she, she piped up and said, well, it's okay to add them, but like, how do you measure them? And so let's talk about that. Tell us what you know about this process, Tracy. But what I would say is one of the trends that I'm seeing is that you as an individual have so much access to your own personal data that you can get about yourself, whether it's your soft skills, what your own grit ratio is, and all the other aspects of how you like to learn, where you can close gaps on skills. I mean, the degree folks are doing a phenomenal job there. So what I encourage people to do is look at individual assessments about the skills that you either think you're, pres you know, you're present to, like, I like doing this. I want to see how, how am I, is it my perception or am I actually somebody who does love change as much as I think, as well as and really any of the flex or the, or the no skills. I just think any, across any of the spectrum of the skill set, there's lots of different validation points that you can do easily by taking assessments and getting your own personal data and creating your own scoreboard for yourself, if you will, where you are and where you want to go. 